Welcome to the Squeeze with Tony Pasquazi, Frankie Bacalars. We're joined by Zach Chiseth of your men's basketball team coming off a phenomenal win against Augsburg. This guy's a busy man. They have a game tomorrow against Gustavus, but it took time out of his schedule to be with us today. So thanks, Zach. Thanks for joining us. Of course, of course. My pleasure. So, I mean, what was the bus like after that win last night? What was the bus ride home like? Super energetic. I'd say sometimes after games, guys will kind of go to bed. I don't think anyone was sleeping yesterday. We were all super excited after that one, you know, the comeback. And then Kareem hitting that three, I don't know, that really, like, energized me specifically. And I think everyone was just super exciting. That was the first time we beat Augsburg, and I think it was, like, 14 years. So I just, like, things are changing around here, and I think we're all just, like, really enjoying it. So... Yeah, and then two big win, or actually, you're on a four, five game winning streak, five game winning streak now, uh, five and one, two games in a row where you came from behind. One was non conference against Bethel, and then this last one against a really tough Augsburg team. What can you guys do to get out quickly and not have to come from behind and not make a habit of that? Yeah, I, I don't know what our deal is. We just we like the come from behind wins, I guess. But I think something we always struggle right in the first half starting off games. So I think something we could do is just be more like attentive, like right off the bat, you know, just sometimes we give go open shots right away, just stuff like that, that we can kind of clean up. But I think we're also a team that kind of gets rolling based on like how the game's going. We kind of like figure teams out more in the second half. And I think that's like why we start clicking, especially offensively more in the second half of games. But I don't know. I just, that's kind of how we are. We never feel like we're out of a game. That's something I like really like about just all of us. I don't think no, the moment's never too big. And I think that really comes down to like our senior leadership has really helped with that. So. Yeah. And uh, you know, let me know if I'm overstepping here or if I'm, you know, incorrect, but it seems like your, your offense as a team is centered around star players. It's centered around Raheem Anthony and Eli Cave. And sometimes you struggle in a zone because those guys thrive on beating their man to the basket, getting open, you know, finding a guy off a double team and against Bethel and against Augsburg, you've struggled against the zone. Meanwhile, teams like Augsburg and Bethel do a really nice job of passing the ball all the way the round. You know, everybody gets opportunities. Um, are you guys going to try to shift more towards that or are you going to stick with what's working and just ride your stars? Well, yeah, I think we're just going to ride the stars, but we have all, we've had lots of conversations both in practice, like in game, just whenever about needing to move the ball more, you kind of get stagnant. Like you're referring to, like, we'll just give the ball to Raheem and Eli and that they're talented enough. They can go do that. But it's like, the question is like, is that sustainable? And like, can other guys kind of do more? So I think, Ideally, we would start to you know, still lean on them super heavily because they are so talented. But also, I think there is like room for the rest of us to, like, like you said, move the ball around, just kind of get more movement on offense because we do get stagnant and it does kind of leave us like one dimensional at times if we rely too heavily on them. So, yeah, I don't know if you knew this, Tony, but we actually have Minnesota basketball royalty talking to us right now. Zach Chiseth is one of seven players to score a quadruple double in the history of Minnesota basketball. So what was your stat line for that game, Zach? I had 10 points, 16 assists, 11 rebounds, and 10 steals. Holy cow! In how many minutes? <laughs> it was – I didn't play the full game. I, I that, yeah. It was probably like 30 minutes. Six – okay, now what was the order in which you got – the double digits did you have the points first did you have the assist first how, how did that go I I think I had assist first and then I know steals was the last one because I didn't know I was even close to, no. to be honest but I was at nine and then my my coach did tell me that part during a timeout he's just like he was gonna give me like two more minutes to like see if I could do it and I did so I was like <laughs> and then I didn't really I didn't really realize like I mean obviously it was cool but I didn't really think much about it but then he had me go on the uh, Minnesota State High School League and look at it, and it was like, yeah, at that time I was like the seventh dude to like ever do that. So that was like, that's pretty cool looking back on it. It's definitely like the coolest like stat line I've ever had for sure. So, 
and you've parlayed that success here in the Mayak against Bethel. You had double digit points. You, I mean, you were on fire from three. Was that your best game so far as a Cardinal? For sure. That, uh, yeah, that was a great game. I actually, I felt like I came off one of my worst games. So I was like really hoping to have a bounce back game. And when I got in, I just against the zone, I'm like, I was going to be aggressive. I'm going to look for my shot. And yeah, it was awesome. I felt like I got a quick one early, quick little mid range, and then that kind of just opened up everything else. And I was just, I was glad to be the spark we needed for that specific game. So that was super, on a personal note though, I've been waiting for a game like that. So that was super exciting. Yeah. And, you know, we have the stars, you got Raheem, you got Eli. And then that third guy is kind of changed every single game. Occasionally it's Kareem. Occasionally it's Nick Falls or it's you, Zach Gseth. Sometimes it's Caden Freetley. Who can be the guy to stand up and be the third option that you can count on every day? Or can this continue where it's kind of passing the baton off to whoever's hottest? I would give that like... I would give the credit to like Kareem. I think like when it comes down to it, he is and needs to be our third option. But I do think the one great thing about our team is obviously we have our top two, but I do think honestly that that baton can keep being like handed off. I think certain guys on certain nights are going to be hitting more than others. And I think that's something that like really shows our trust in each other. Cause you know, if one guy is hitting on a certain day, then like you just got to ride that out. And I think we're okay doing that. I, don't really feel like anyone really needs the credit. I think that's another thing that like is making our team just like play well, but I would give it to Kareem. I think even if it's not always offensively, what he does for us defensively and just his energy and his leadership is something that's like really, like I think helps us more than like maybe the casual fan would realize. And I do think he always has been hitting big shots for us for like all my time here. So I think, I think it'll be him, say we get in the game that we need him, that'll be a third option. But guys like hopefully myself, Caden, Deshaun, you know, just those are some guys I think can definitely also step up. So, Yeah, and then who's that un unsung hero? Like the guy who isn't really showing up on the stat sheet right now. He might in the future, but he means everything to you guys in the locker room and in practice. Who is that guy right now? I think a guy that does a lot of things that don't show up on the stat sheet would be Bruce Lockwood. He's a fresh, you know, freshman. I think arguably I'd say he's one of our best defenders already. And he does a lot of the dirty work, you know, like setting screens, just like boxing the guy out. So like Eli or someone can come in and get the rebound, just stuff like that, that like you'll never see on the stat sheet, but it's still like huge to having a good team. So I thought I would say him. And then I, uh, we've talked to Raheem, uh, we've talked to Eli, we've, we've talked to Nick Falls, and I actually I talked to Raheem about Nick Falls. There's, that's where I was going. Uh, and we asked him what he thinks Nick could do to, to get to that next level, and he said confidence. And then the next game you guys went out there, he took the floor with confidence, had 12 points, he looked like a Mayak big, he looked like a guy who could do it every day. What's the one thing that you need, whether that be confidence or maybe better defense or more consistent shooting? What's the, the one thing you need to do to get to a consistent Mayak level play? Yeah, I would go off. I would use like the term confidence as well, but more like I think aggression. Like I think when I'm out there, I just need to trust all the work that I put in and go out there and do it like in game because that I've been like coaches telling me like I'm out there to score. And sometimes I feel like I'm a little hesitant because of guys like, you know, having like Eli and Raheem out there, it's pretty easy to be like, oh, well, let's swing it to them, you know, like let them create. But I think just like trusting myself, trusting the fact that like everyone on the team knows I can do it and just going out there and actually doing it. So I would say just like confidence slash like aggression would be like the biggest thing I could do to become more consistent, especially offensively. I just want to hear who's your March Madness champion this year. Mine, win. I think I think Iowa has a good chance. Ooh. Luka Garza. I think that's a wild prediction. Iowa. Wild. What happened to oh. Illinois? The Illini, they're looking pretty tough. They're super tough. Yeah. I don't know. I think there's multiple. I they yeah. 
There's yeah. a lot of good teams out there. But it's Duke hard. might miss the tournament. Know. Yeah, Duke might miss the tournament. How about you guys? Yeah, I mean, man. we see Coach Kyle Brown tweeting about it all the time. I retweet it every time I see it. I mean, what does it mean to you guys that the NCAA has, you know, decided not to give you uh, a national tournament? Like, it sucks. I think for multiple reasons, just in any given year, I think it's, like, pretty dumb to take that away from, you know, we put in a lot of time to, like, for that. But their ultimate goal as an athlete at the college level is to make that. So it's, like, to have that stripped away from you is pretty annoying. And then specifically with this year, yeah. I mean, I mean, this team might be one of the best ever. I mean, just so it just sucks to know that, like, with that, if we had a tournament, like, there's a good chance we could, like, make a run at it. And to not have that is obviously, like, a little demoralizing. But I don't know. that It, it does suck. Like, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I wish we could have it. I don't – I wish they could change that ruling or whatever it would take. But – we try not to think about it. I think we're doing a good job still just, like, let's go out and win the games we have. We're looking more at, like, a blessing than anything else. We get to play. Some teams don't, like, across the country. Mm-hmm. We're just trying to enjoy it. But it does suck. Yeah. And, I mean, until you guys lose one, that Mayak championship, it's right there for the taking. And that's still on the table. So I, I'm sure that's something in front of you guys that that you're jonesing for. For sure. That would be – obviously you know that's like the goal right now is to just win the conference and or just like not you know just not lose here on out i guess yeah just keep winning the games we do have so that's definitely the main goal and then one last question for the record how do you say your last name she says so c-h-e-e so hyphen seth you know that's how the best way i can explain it I saw your tweet. I appreciate it. I don't think it's that hard once people actually ask, but it is a little annoying. I've been dealing with it all my whole life. I don't really <laughs> let it bother me, but I would prefer if they get it right, obviously. That would be nicer. Yeah, that J does throw you off. The J and the K. Oh. I mean, it, the whole name throws you off, but once you know it. Yeah. Oh, by the looks of it, I'm like, I don't. I understand why people mess it up for sure. It's like just, I just wish like, you know, you asked me, like, I think once someone, once I tell them how to say it, then I feel like there really is no reason to mess it up, but. Yeah. <laughs> so now I'm going to clip this and I'm going to tweet it every time I hear a play-by-play guy <laughs> say it incorrectly and hopefully they see it and we can get a little momentum towards the correct pronunciation of Zach Cheeseth's name. <laughs> I, that would be perfect. I appreciate it. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, Zach. Good luck against the Gusties and, uh, you know, keep marching towards that championship, man. For sure. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Take care, guys.